In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We welcome you once again to our family group of perseverance. We've done the spiritual exercise of most of us, and we're walking together with Mary and St. Joseph and the saints. We're trying to persevere. Jesus says, those who persevere to the end will be saved. Let's pray that we would persevere to the end and be saved. And as always, we would like to invite the Blessed Mother to be with us. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. And Mary is the Mother of each and every one of us. So we'd like to invite Mary to pray with, you, pray with us, pray for us, and to accompany us so that we, like Mary, can ponder the Word of God, meditate upon the Word of God, in our hearts. So let's say the prayer that Mary loves most. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And of course we want to invite our spiritual guide to be with us. He's known as also the consoler the Counselor. He's known also as the Paraclete. He's known as the Intercessor. He's also known to be the love between the Father and the Son. He's the Sanctifier. He who makes us holy. He's also known as the Sweet Guest of the Soul. So let's lift up our minds, our hearts, and our souls to the Holy Spirit, as we sing. Spirit of the living God, full afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, full afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, Fill us, use us, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. O Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Denise Loyola, pray for us. Saint Barnabas, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning to all of you. So those who are new to our program after the exercises, this is an extension of the spiritual exercises program. And we're basically using two sources. First is this. We're using the Word of God. This was a source that I suggested to you that you try to purchase a Magnificat. You can follow along with me, the Word of God. You can use your own uh, Roman Missal, if you like that, or another source that has the readings for the day. So this is number one. Uh, we want to uh, use this. By the way, also, if, if you prefer, you can just go online and my... Tech, 
technological expert is able to put place online this biblical passage of the day as well as a commentary on it. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you. But it's not simply to come to my class, which you come free of charge, gratis, and come and invite your friends to the class, but also this is a springboard by which all of you can dive into the intimate, infinite and immense treasures, ocean of the Word of God. So we want you to try to find that time to make your holy hour. Okay, try to make your holy hour and if possible to be able to share some of the fruits of your holy hour with another person. So this is the, um, this is the text that I've been using. And as I said, you can use other texts, but we're going to be going through the Word of God for the day, as well as the saint that we celebrate. And also, uh, at the end of the class, we have been, we've been going through this, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So we're taking just one number at a time, and I'm explaining this uh, to you. So my class has a, two, a double purpose. One is to help you to go deeper in your prayer life by means of meditating upon the Bible every day and meditating upon the first reading, the psalm, and then meditating upon the gospel for the day. So that's the primary purpose, to help us to go deeper in our prayer life. For that reason, we call this group Perseverance Group because after we've, we've gone through 10 weeks of meditation on the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius, we want you to persevere. And we know that perseverance is, is not easy. If you're running a, wrong, if, if you're running a, a sprint, which is 100 meters, it's one thing. But if you're running a marathon, and if you have run a marathon, I have. Okay, you're running a marathon, two and a half, three miles, you got to persevere and you got to pace yourself. So we're running a marathon in our spiritual life. We want to make sure that we are able to pace ourselves and not to conk out along the way. And this is important because there's so much confusion out there today. We've never lived in the world with so much information, but we've never lived in the world that has so much confusion as today. And if we don't have a good firm grasp on our faith, we're going to end up by being confused and your children are going to be doubly confused. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church will teach us what the truth is. So I, I'm really happy to be able to go through the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I read years ago and able, able to go into this gold mine once again with all of you. It's just a wonderful, wonderful textbook, Catechism of the Catholic Church. So, today is a little bit different, the, our presentation in this sense, that we celebrate the saints, and when we're going to be celebrating a saint, especially today, the reading is actually directed to the saint that we celebrate. Today we celebrate Saint Barnabas. June 11th, we celebrate St. Barnabas. Later on in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we'll read that the saints can help us in many, many ways. No doubt about that. The saints can help us in many, many ways. But the Catechism outlines, highlights, especially two ways that the saints can help us. Number one is the saints, their power of intercession. Their power of intercession. That they can intercede for us before God and to help us out. I'll give you a very simple example. As a child and a teenager, I was very athletic. I played a lot of sports many sports, and I was pretty good at them, too. Not to toot my horn, but you know, I played I played uh, baseball even in college my first year, so I'm a pretty good athlete. As a child, I would play uh, baseball in the street. 
if I hit a, I th I hit a home run, and the the ball went through our window. I would go to my mother until I broke the window so that she could talk to my dad and she could intercede before my dad so that my punishment would be maybe less. That's a simple example. That the saints, the saints, they go before God and they present our petitions before God. Mary is the queen of all the angels and the saints. So Mary is the most powerful intercessor. The second reason why we honor the saints, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, is their example. The saints have left us a beautiful example that we're, we're called to follow in their footsteps, not to imitate them like monkeys, no? Not to imitate them, but we're called to practice virtue. The saints practice heroic virtue. We are also called to practice heroic virtue. In other words, the saints encourage us. The saints encourage us to practice heroic virtue and to live out what's called the universal call. It's called the universal call to holiness. All of us, all of us are called to become saints. As Jesus said, be holy as your heavenly Father is holy. So the sanctity, the call to become a saint is not just for a certain group of individuals, but it's a universal call, meaning that applies to all of us. So if that's the case, we have to have models. Remember years ago when I played baseball, Many years ago, I happened to be a Yankee fan, and I, I admired people like Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. I'm, I'm betraying my age, if any of you know anything about baseball. But I admire these, uh, these great players, and I would look at the way that they would hit the ball, the way they would run, the way they would slide into bases, the way, the, the way they would steal bases. By the way, stealing bases in baseball, it's not a sin. It's one sport that you can steal and it's not a sin. Stealing bases in baseball is not a sin. It's not against the uh, seventh commandment. Okay, so the saints can help us. They can help us by their prayers. And the saints can help us also by their good example that they've left us. So the saints are up in heaven. Can't really say that the saints are very distant to us, but they're close to us. But we have to recognize them, and we have to call upon them. We're very different than the Protestants in the sense that the Protestants believe that the saints are those who are living and they follow Christ today. We believe that the saints also, they're in heaven, but they help us on earth so that we can go to heaven. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, uh, a little explanation of the saint that we celebrate today. Here's somewhat of a quickie, uh, a, a tricky question. The apostles. How many apostles were there? Do you know the apostles? I know what you're probably saying, and. The apostles, you're going to say, well, there were 12. And that's right. But also, there were three latter apostles. So the apostles would be Peter, James, John. Then there was also, his name was Philip, Andrew, Thomas, Bartholomew, James, Alas, Simon, the Zealot, Matthew, Jude, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed our Lord. Those would be the, the, the 12 original apostles. The 12 uh, pillars on which the Lord built his church. 
by the word by the way the word apostle means sent out they were sent out to preach the word of god however it has to be said that there were apostles that came later apostles that came later than the the original 12 and there were actually three of them do you know them Okay, the first would be St. Paul the Apostle. The second would be, do you remember after Judas Iscariot hanged himself? He committed suicide. You saw it maybe in the film of Mel Gibson. Then after Judas hanged himself, the apostles came together, headed by Peter, he said, look, we have to choose another one to replace Judas, who went to the place destined for him, the son of perdition. So they came together and they prayed, and they narrowed it down to two. Joseph Barsabbas and a man named Matthias. So they prayed and they chose lots, and they chose lots and the lot that they chose was St. Matthias, who we celebrate on May 14th. He was the one that, that replaced Judas Iscariot. Okay, but then there's a latter one, and that's the one that we celebrate today. And his name is St. Barnabas. So I'd like to give you, uh, I'd like to give you a profile I'd like to give you a biographical profile of this man, and then we'll we'll be able to read the the first reading of the mass today. So it's good to get to know the the person, and then we can go into what what his what his teaching was, because he's an apostle that would go off with Paul, and then he changed companions and would go off with uh, John Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Okay, Barnabas, let's start with his name. Now, for the Jewish people, the name would often signify the function of the, of the name. For example, if we take the name Jesus, what does the name Jesus mean? It's Yosue. If you go to the Old Testament, in the Liturgy of the Hours now, we're reading uh, the book of Joshua, who replaced Moses. Actually, the word Joshua and Jesus is the same name, Jeshua. If you watch the film of the Passion of Christ, Mary called Jesus Jeshua, because the film was basically in, in Hebrew, in Aramaic. So the name of Jesus indicated his function, and the function, the primary purpose of Jesus was what? To save the people of their sins. Yes. To save the people of their sins. Okay. Peter. Greek. Petra. Rock. Jesus said, you are Peter, rock. On you I will build my church. And the gates of Hell will not prevail against you. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So the word Petra means rock, and rock is the foundation of the church, and Peter would be the first successor of Christ. Okay, let's take then, let's take the word Barnabas. His name is a very beautiful name. And his name is, it means son of consolation or son of encouragement in other words Barnabas was a person that would encourage other people you know I think we should form a Barney club yeah maybe we could start to form a Barney club maybe today form the, the Barney club the Barney club why do I say the Barney club because there's so much there is so much negativism, there's so much anger, there's so much bitterness, there's so much fighting, there's so much tension, 
There's sad to say racism still. There's so much uh, chismosos, they say in Spanish. There's so much gossip, backbiting. Uh, you know, there's so much of that out there. Let's try to change. Let's try to change. Let's uh, ask Barnabas to help us to form a club. Let's enter into the club of Barnabas, the Barney Club, and try to encourage other people, not knock people down, but encourage other people. I think that this is very much related to what Jesus said to St. Faustina Kowalska. Jesus said to St. Faustina Kowalska these words, if you want to receive mercy, then you've got to give mercy. Jesus said, be merciful as your Heavenly Father is merciful. So for us to receive mercy, we have to give mercy. And Jesus said to St. Faustina Kowalska, said, there are three, do an, he said, do an act of mercy every day. And the act of mercy you do every day can be of three types. It could be of prayer, I pray for you, word, a word of consolation, and it can be an action, some type of work. So I say Hail Mary for you. I say a kind word to you. I practice some corporal work of mercy toward you. That I think would be, that would probably be the primary condition to enter into the Barney Club. I think St. Barnabas would be, would be very happy that I'm promoting a new club in honor of him in heaven. It's called the Barney Club, the Barnabas Club, which we are going to try not to tear people down. We're called to, pil to, to build people up and to try to practice, try to practice mercy. St. John Paul II said, mercy is the second name for love. So let's move from the name of Barnabas. Let's move from the name of Barnabas to an action that he carried out. He was a uh, he was a um, a Jew from Cyprus, not Cyprus in California. Cyprus on the other part of the world. He was a Jew, and of, of course he's going to be converted to Christianity. There there were Jews that were converted to Christianity. Don't forget that most of the followers of Jesus Christ were Jewish converts to Christ. Jesus himself was Jewish. Mary was Jewish as well as St. Joseph. So there were Jews that were converted to Christ. Okay, Paul was a Jew. The only one, Luke was not a Jew. Jew was a Greek. Uh, uh, Luke was a Greek. But he was converted and one very important element of the conversion of St. Barnabas was the following. St. Barnabas had money. St. Barnabas had money. What did he do? He went and he apparently had this, this field. Back in the time of Jesus, currency was available. But owning land was a sign of wealth. So currency, they didn't have currency that they would place in banks the way we do it. They didn't have stocks and bonds. Okay? They were not worried about the crashing of of Wall Street, stock market. That didn't exist. But they, they, if they had a parcel of land or a plot of land, that was a sign of the fact that they, they were rich. 
And if they had houses on it, even more so. So what did Barnabas do? He went and he sold, he sold a plot of land. They gave him money. What did he do with that? He didn't put it in the bank. He didn't say, well, I'm going to Las Vegas now. Well, I think I'll buy a Maserati and I'll buy another house in Las, in Las Vegas or Beverly Hills. No. He didn't, that didn't occur to him. He took the money, he took the money from that plot of land And he put that money at the feet of the apostles. Yes. He took the money from the land. He put it at the feet of the apostles. What did I say about this biographical profile of this man? That, that says a lot. I think it says, number one, is that he learned the importance of detachment. The beginning of the week, we gave you the Beatitudes, the eight Beatitudes. The first Beatitude was, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We see in this man, we see in this man, this attitude. We see generosity that he was willing to give. He understood that there's more joy in giving than in receiving. Mother Teresa put it this way. Mother Teresa said, give until it hurts. Give until it hurts. In second, we see in this attitude of selling his plot and placing the money at the feet of the apostles. Not only is it generosity, but detachment. Yes. We have to learn to be detached. Saint Ignatius, many of you have done the spiritual exercises. Saint Ignatius Loyola, in Principle and Foundation, the last paragraph, he speaks about detachment using the concept of holy indifference, that we should not be attached to long life over a shorter life. We shouldn't be attached to health over sickness. We shouldn't be attached to riches over poverty. We shouldn't be attached to honors over humiliations. We shouldn't be attached. We have to learn to relinquish. We have to learn to be like Barnabas and to give. Give until it hurts. If you have your hand filled with dirt, I cannot put diamonds in your hand. I think that's common sense. I repeat, if you have a hand filled with dirt or dust, you have to relinquish it. Once you open up that hand, then I can put diamond in your hands. Both of your hands are filled with, with dust. You cannot grab onto the hands of Jesus and Mary. To be able to grab onto the hands of Jesus and Mary, you have to relinquish it. And then you can hold onto the hands of Jesus and Mary. So detachment. And you know, my friends, sometimes we're attached to certain things 
for attached to certain things that are relatively unimportant. And by being attached to certain things, there's a certain slavery there. <clears throat> Maybe you're attached to dresses and clothes and things like that. Not to say that you can't have a dress or you can't have clothes, but sometimes it's too much. Pope well, Francis once said you can't be overly attached to cosmetics, too. I mean, you don't want to so leave the house like a uh, come on a brook, huh, as they say in Spanish, no? But you can go overboard. I remember hearing a story of, and this is related to Barnabas, and we're, we're called to, to, to give, to give, so that we can receive even more. If we give to Christ and we give to others, then Christ is going to give us even more. The joy in giving. And it's it's this story. There was once a, uh, a uh, little girl who was about seven years old, and her parents had bought her a plastic necklace at 99 cents. And the little girl loved this plastic necklace. Is what she loved most. Made her feel like a little woman, huh? So one day her father comes home and says, uh, honey, give me that plastic necklace. And I'll give you something even better. She said, no, daddy, no. This is my necklace. So a week passes and the father approaches the little girl and says, you know, would you give me the necklace and I'll give you something better? No, daddy. Another week passed and the father said, come on, give me the necklace. No. After a month, the little girl had been thinking, well, my daddy said he'll give me something better <clears throat> than this necklace. I can't imagine it. <clears throat> So the father comes home, and the girl, with tears in her eyes, has got a fist. She says, Daddy, I got the necklace. So he gives, she gives her father the necklace, and he gleefully goes into his room, opens up his safe, and says, Come here. And he put it around her neck. A necklace of precious pearls, which was very, very valuable. He says, now, honey, you got the real deal. You got the real thing. That was just artificial. That was just plastic pearls from 99 cents. Now you got the real deal. You got a real necklace around your, your, around your neck. And I think, my friends, sometimes we prefer the 99 cents cheap thing over the real deal, the real thing. So Barnabas was able to say no to his property, no to material things. He was able to sell it. He was able to detach himself. And by doing that, he was able to give the money to the apostles. And the apostles would take that money and they would divide it and parcel it out to give it to the poor people that needed the money more than Barnabas. So you might step back and ask yourself as we meditate upon the readings for the today, and especially that of Barnabas, is what are you still attached to? Do you allow, do you allow your possessions to possess you. Yeah. That's the $100 question. Do you allow, do you allow possessions to possess you? If we, you allow your possessions to possess you, you're not free. You're not free to hear the word of God. You're not free to really follow Christ because you're placing some person, place, thing, above God. Our God is a jealous God and God does not want to take second place to anyone. God wants to be meadow meadow. He wants to be number one. 
He wants to be number one in our lives. So that's, we're going from the name of Barnabas, then we're going to the attitude of Barnabas. It was an attitude of a rich man who was willing to give up his riches so that he would have his riches in heaven and that his riches, his pearl of infinite price, was not the money that he had in his hands, but a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that that's the purpose of our meetings. The purpose of your meditation is to discover the infinite riches and treasure you have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you know, my friends, the richest person in the world and the poorest person in the world, they're both going to end up in the same place. Six feet beneath the ground. I repeat, the richest person in the world and the poorest person in the world is going to end up in the same place. Six feet beneath the ground. You're never going to see a U-Haul van following a funeral hearse. You're never going to see that. None of us, none of us will escape the reality of death. So Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven for yourself. But neither moss, moth nor rust can destroy. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will be given to you besides. Okay, another biographical um, note or quality of Barnabas, which means son of consolation, is the Acts of the Apostles. We, we, we don't find uh, Barnabas in the Gospels. Rather, rather we find <clears throat> Barnabas in the book that follows the Gospel of St. John, the Acts of the Apostles, that we're meditating on for 50 days during the Easter season. The Acts of the Apostles give to Barnabas these wonderful attributes, this character profile of, of Barnabas is really beautiful. So you have three or four qualities of Barnabas. Well, let's go through them. Well, let's pray that maybe we'll be able to imitate. Maybe we'll be able to imitate some of these virtues of Barnabas. Okay, Barnabas, son of consolation, son of encouragement. He was a person, as I said, he wanted to encourage others when he would go to the community that was established like in Antioch, Antioch, and he saw that the word of God was spreading, that people were being converted, the Holy Spirit was present there, God's Christianity was spreading far and wide in Antioch where the Christians were first called Christians. Barnabas, he rejoiced. He rejoiced and he encouraged them. He saw good. You know what sometimes happens? Listen to this. We see something good happening in another person. Maybe that person is someone that's in our family. Maybe it's someone that's very close to us. Instead of rejoicing and encouraging that person, and complimenting that person, and thanking God for that person. You know what we do? Because of jealousy and envy, we become sad, become depressed. Then we start to speak negatively about that person. We become 
una chismosa. We become una chismosa. We become a gossip. You know where gossip comes from? Come from the devil. But also behind the gossip is jealousy and envy and insecurity and low self-esteem. Pope Francis, in many of his preachings over the past couple of years, he's pounding away against the real danger of allowing ourselves to be slaves of our own insecurity and is manifested by jealousy and envy, by backbiting, backbiting and gossip and negative speech. So Barnabas, he was the exact opposite. So he saw good and he built upon the good. Often what we do, we see good and we tear down the good. So let's try not to tear down other people. Let's try not to tear down the good. But let's try to build up. St. Saint Bonaventure says we should open up our mouth on three occasions. We should open up our mouth to praise God. Open up our mouth to accuse ourselves. And open up our mouth to edify to build up others. You know, parents, even if you have some parents listen to me, yeah, you got to correct your kids. But say something good to your kids, too. Well, all of it shouldn't be negative, 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 negative. Say something kind to your children. Something good that they've done. Then correct them when you have to correct them. But sometimes we can be overly negative. We're always complaining, yelling. We always see the bad rather than the good. Or Barnabas was able to see the good and he would build upon it. And he would encourage. So Barnabas, son of consolation, would build up. Let's form the Barney Club. The Barney Club. Yeah. The Barney Club. And it says then, he was a good man. Okay, that's a very simple attribute or quality. Let's pray that we would be filled with goodness. Wisdom chapter 1, 1, my founder insists that we should present the goodness of God. Seek the Lord in goodness. May all of you have good hearts. There we see the beautiful image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We are in the month of June, which is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Pray that we'd have a good heart, a loving heart, a kind heart, a generous heart, like Barnabas. So he was a good man. Then there's another quality. It says that Barnabas was a man filled with faith. I repeat, he was a man filled with faith. What is faith, my friends? Faith is so important. Faith is a theological virtue that connects us with God, in which we believe in God. We believe in His words. We believe in His church. We believe in the way He's working with us, even though sometimes it's mysterious. Faith and belief are connected. Faith is believing in a God that we don't see. If we see, it's no longer faith. 
when we die and we go to heaven, we're no longer going to have any faith. Because when we go to heaven, we're going to be seeing, as you see the image of Jesus up there, you're going to see him face to face in what the theologians call the beatific vision. But faith is so important. As a Barnabas was a man filled with faith. Maybe during these past 10, 11 weeks, maybe your faith has been going down. Now with St. Barnabas, we want our faith to start to go up. Very important we have faith. Very important theologian in this country that died in the year 2000. His name was Servant of God, John Harden, who was a Jesuit priest, known as a one-man spiritual army. He did so much good. Faithful Jesuit priest. He made this comment related to St. Barnabas. He noted, that people that lose their faith, that eventually they abandon their faith, eventually they become agnostic or atheists or non-believers. He noticed this. In all the cases, those who lost their faith were those who gave up prayer. So do you want to grow in your faith? I repeat, do you want to grow in your faith? Do you want to grow in your faith? That's the purpose of these classes I'm giving to you. Two primary purposes of these classes I'm giving to you is to strengthen your faith by means of helping you to pray more and better. So I'm giving you the tools, the instruments. It's up to you to use the tools and instruments that I'm giving to you. If you are faithful to your prayer life, you're faithful to your holy hour. Your faith is going to grow like St. Barnabas. And eventually you're going to be saved. Prince One Foundation. St. Augustine put it this way. The great St. Augustine. Who was baptized when he was about 31 years old. Because he was a slave of his passions for many years. St. Augustine says this. He who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. You like that? I'll say it again. He who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. So our faith in our salvation is ignited and supported and it flourishes in as much as we have a deep prayer life. Right now I'm going to ask you a quickie, uh, I'm going to ask you a, a tricky question. A tricky question. And it's this. Here's the tricky question. What does A-S-A-P stand for? Okay, I ask you the question again. What does A-S-A-P stand for? I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. As soon as possible, Padre. 
Well, you're not totally wrong, but I'd like to baptize that and give a Christian Catholic interpretation related to our topic. You say, as soon as possible, Father, tell me as soon as possible what you're getting at. Okay. ASAP. Always say a prayer. Amen. You like that? I thought you would. Always say a prayer in honor of St. Barnabas. Let's move on. Let's move on to another quality of St. Barnabas. Barnabas, son of consolation, a good man, a man strong in faith. Another quality says that Barnabas was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a beautiful quality. Beautiful quality. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? My friends, we spent nine days. Nine days we spent giving you classes on the Holy Spirit the gifts of the Holy Spirit. By now, if you're following our, our presentations free of charge, by now you should know who the Holy Spirit is. Barnabas was filled with the Holy Spirit. And as I said at the beginning of my class, when we meditate upon the saints, They should encourage us, motivate us to want to become saints. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, be holy as your heavenly father is holy. One of the modern saints, we gave Father Antolini before he went off to the missions in the Amazon, he gave him a missionary cross. The name of this modern saint is Saint Pope John the 23rd. Saint Pope John the 23rd said this, the saints are the masterpieces of the Holy Spirit. Michelangelo the Pietà. Leonardo da Vinci, The Last Supper, Dante, The Divine Comedy, William Shakespeare, Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear. You are called to be the spiritual masterpiece of the Holy Spirit. You are called to be the spiritual masterpiece. You're called to become a saint in honor of St. Barnabas. And it can be done. It can be done. All of you are called to become great saints. You are. Starting right now. My friend, I really love this saint. And I have to give you another quality and then We'll leave you with the readings that you can read for yourself. You can read for yourself. Barnabas was a great missionary. A great missionary. He was a missionary with the great apostle St. Paul. But he gave credit 
He gave credit to Paul. You know why? Is because Saul of Tarsus was was arresting the Christians, throwing them in jail, and they were being put to death. Saul of Tarsus was converted on the road to Damascus, and he became a follower of Christ. And the people were afraid of him. So it was actually Barnabas, Barnabas was the one that actually gave credit to Saul of Tarsus so that the people would believe. Then Barnabas became a missionary companion with St. Paul. But listen, Barnabas had a disagreement with St. Paul because of Mark who abandoned them at the first missionary voyage. So Paul and Barnabas had a quarrel and a discussion. But then they came back, they were estranged and they reconciled. And I think that's very important for us. Living in community, living in the family, it's not always easy. Sometimes we have disagreements. Sometimes we don't see eye to eye. So after a quarrel or disagreement with whoever it might be, especially in your family, it's a good idea to reconcile. Or with your husband, if you're married. The Bible says, don't go to bed. Don't allow the sun to go down on your anger. So my friends, I've given you a, a conversation on the central figure in the Mass today. is always Jesus. But we celebrate a faithful friend of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His name is Barnabas. Why not form the Barney Club? The Barney Club. Barnabas means son of encouragement, son of consolation. We have received consolation from the Consoler, the Holy Spirit. You have received consolation through Mary. You've received consolation maybe through my presentations, which I give you free of, car free of charge. What you have received freely, give freely. So I'd like to give you my priestly blessing and then dive into the Word of God. Now, we didn't have time for the Catechism, but read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which would be number six today you can go online and you can read and reflect upon the catechism of the catholic church so i'd like to give you my priestly blessing the lord be with you may almighty god bless all of you in a very special way in honor of saint barnabas in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god bless all of you